Okay, I do believe that we've got Lachlan Meakin standing by to give us his thoughts on all of the commentary coming from Bank of England Governor Andrew Bailey. Let's get there now. Lachlan from Go Markets, welcome to the program. Good to see you there. Good morning, Nadine. How are you? I'm very well. Okay, so obviously the pound mm. is garnering a lot of attention. Give us your assessment. I mean, sterling has absolutely been battered. It's been a wild ride the last two weeks. I mean, it's it's got the nickname the Widowmaker at work now. It's it's um some of the moves in the pound late September with that budget um and and what's happened this week with the you know dysfunction in the gilt market. It's it's it has been a, a very wild ride and, and I think the volatility is going to remain at least to the end of the week with um uh, with this deadline that Bailey's given. Um, and probably will remain up until the end of the month when uh, the Treasurer comes out with his, uh, his, his fiscal policy. I think it's October 31st. So um, be brave to trade the pound at the moment, but I would suggest it's going to remain under pressure um, under this 110. I wouldn't be surprised to see it continue down, especially with the strength in the US dollar, which um, really is just uh, has been the story for the last you know, six, seven months. This, this strength in the US dollar, every, every dip in the dollar is being bought. Um, they've got the fundamentals behind them. They've got the hawkish central bank. I mean, even the doves on the weekend, I think it was um, Brainard and Evans. Uh, they, they, even they sounded fairly hawkish and then messed it last night. So the Fed's certainly nowhere near finished by the sounds of it. Um, so US dollar is going to stay well bid and that's going to put pressure on things like the pound, uh, especially with, with, the, with the issues going on there behind the scenes as well in the UK. Okay, so we will be keeping an eagle eye on the pound, but we can't take our attention away from the euro as well. We've had some commentary coming from the ECB through the overnight period. I mean, what's going to happen with, with the pound in this environment? Well, the euro is another one. I mean, they're, they're starting to show some signs of distress on too in, the, in their bond market, not quite to the UK levels, but... Um, there are some news coming out about some, you know, the swaps and, and the spreads between, say, the German and Italian bonds. And there is, it looks like there's a, there's some issues brewing there, which which could uh, come to the fore. So, the euro certainly um, will be under pressure. I think um, it, it will probably not be as under much pressure as the pound. So, if you if you're trading against each other, then the euro might be a better bet with the dysfunction in the pound at least for the next couple of weeks. Um, but both of them, as, as I said, it's been the story for the last few months. It's just any any pop in either of those against the US dollar, I'd be selling. It's, there's there's no reason to think this, this US dollar bull run is going to end um, anytime soon. It's certainly not to the end of the year, at least, I would think. Okay, so what are your expectations, Lachlan, when it comes to that US inflation read? The headline rate looks like it may have moderated a little bit. Uh, probably helped by um, oil prices during September, uh, pushing down gasoline prices. The the Core reading, more likely a, a surprise upside with the mid. Um, and that's what the market's waiting for. I mean, I think everyone in a bit of a hunt until tomorrow night to see what happens. Um, futures are pricing in, I think, 75 basis point hike in November. So it'll be interesting to see that uh, that expectation change after the figure. Um, high reading, we'll see that pretty much become a done deal, which it almost is anyway and the dollar will remain well bid on that as well of course um but yeah i think it's going to be an interesting one I, I think even if it comes in a bit lower it's still not going to lower the expectations of that 75 too much so i, I can't see a, a too big a hit to the us dollar even if it does come in a bit low to be honest okay all right now um we've talked about many other currencies except our own the cad the canadian dollar you know one of the worst performers as is the aussie dollar as well you it's difficult to see any of that changing, uh, considering we've also got China and the data coming from China continuing to be, you know, quite weak. Um, it, it, it's, it's got COVID cases rising. It's got the NPC coming up. I mean, there's just so many headwinds for the Aussie. I spoke with somebody the other day who said it will likely have a five handle in front of it uh, with the short to medium term in mind. What do you think? <sighs> Oh, that's a big call. But I mean, yes, yeah, certainly right. The, the headwinds for the Aussie dollar are just keep coming. I mean, um, with what you mentioned, we, we were basically a proxy for Chinese growth and we had poor figures out over the weekend. Um, the COVID, zero COVID that they're sticking with, at least until after this um, National Congress, which is, I think, the end of the week. Um, com yeah, commodity prices down. And we've also got an RBA. The RBA hasn't been 
a big a driver. I don't think in the Aussie dollar, it's been more pushed by the, the Chinese story and, and risk in the general market. But the RBA kind of pulling over to the left into the slow lane with the 25 um, hikes when everyone else is still 75. I mean, the Bank of England's expected to do 100 basis points at the next meeting. So we've really pulled into the slow lane there, which is another headwind for the Aussie dollar. Um, we've only been this low twice in the last 20 years, and, and both times it was a sharp shock to the downside, the GFC and um, the pandemic start. So we're in kind of un uncharted territory to make this slow grind down to these levels. And looking at a chart, there's there's not a lot of support between here about 62 and a half and around 60. So I think with the headwinds um, and the global story being a, a, a certainly risk off at the moment, uh, I could certainly see it going down and testing that real big figure at 60. Um, Getting any lower than that would be a push, um, but definitely that 60, which was the low pretty much of the GFC and, and not the low of the pandemic, but it spiked back up for, through that pretty quick and was held as support. So that'll be the big one, um, but a slow grind down to there I can see. And another interesting thing I saw in the Aussie dollar today as well was um, just looking at the retail positioning on it across the, the industry. Um, we've seen most it's about 75 percent of retail traders along this and, and this is a good contrarian indicator i've found quite often um but we've seen a real shift in those longs reducing and the shorts um increasing so with that if you take that as contrarian you could say well, maybe we're getting near the bottom if the retail traders are starting to switch um but on a on a technical and fundamental level it really, I can't see it doing much, but go down at least at least to test that 60. And that, that will be the, the big psychological figure. Whether we get to the fives, um, that's a big call. I, I don't think we will, but I mean, who knows the way the market is at the moment. Um, any real big sell-offs, any real risk-off, could certainly see a spike down there, I think, yeah.